Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Vintage Workshop. A little bit different video for you guys tonight. I usually do my videos down in my basement workshop, and I decided tonight we're going to do something a little bit different, and I'm actually in my kitchen, my wife's kitchen, I guess I should call it. And so I decided I would work on this next project up here in the kitchen versus down there in my workshop, give you guys something different. But there's a reason behind that. So recently I was out on George Christoffi's YouTube site, Old and New Electronics, and I just recently subscribed to his channel because I didn't know he existed, but over the last few weeks I've been watching quite a few of his videos, and he had one video where he was building an AM transmitter. Now as you all know, I've been restoring some AM radios uh, here for the last year or so, and I live in a little small town in Illinois that's out away from everything. So we don't pick up but one, basically one station. It's the one that's locally here uh, in my town. And it's an AM station. It's only talk radio. There's no music on it. So I've been wanting to create an AM transmitter so that I can produce my own signal internally, like off of my phone or my tablet and be able to feed it into the transmitter and then get all my radios to be able to work on it. I've got so many radios now, I might as well have them all tuned to the same channel and be in stereo, right? AM stereo. Anyway, so that's the new project. Again, I'm not restoring a radio in this project. It's also going to be probably shorter than mine usually are because one thing I've learned from George is that his videos are short and sweet, to the point, very funny. The man is detailed. He's fun to watch. He's handsome. He's got a British accent. He's from, you know, over there on the other side of the ocean. And so if you haven't checked out George's site, so what's the project tonight or that we're starting on? I'm going to go old school. I learned that from George on his site. He built a breadboard. AM transmitter. I'm not talking the modern plastic breadboards with all the little holes in it. He built one based on a schematic that he got from Bob over at Robert Gibbons on YouTube. And from Doug over at Moslack. They developed this uh, schematic together and so George used their schematic and what George did was he decided he was going to build it old school now nothing against what Bob and Doug do they build really great circuitry on the little PCB boards and my, my hats off to them my eyes aren't horrible they're for my age they're okay but I just can't see that sort of stuff on detail I have to use a magnifying glass in order to do it so when I saw George say he was going to build this old school breadboard, I was intrigued. So I watched his video and I copied his layout. I took some pictures as I watched it and I copied his layout and I took that layout and I put it on my computer and I manipulated it and I printed it out and I've got it now I'm going to use as my pattern for my old school breadboard. So I've got George's layout using Doug, Mo Doug at Moslack and Bob Givens schematic and so hopefully I'll have a nice old school AM transmitter that I can play music from my tablet to my radios. So that's the intention of this project. I hope you guys enjoy it. It's going to be fun for me and hopefully I come out with a beautiful uh, end result. And so with that we'll Move on from here. Let me get things set up. I'll show you what I've got. All right, let me show you what i got here. We're making an old school breadboard. What I buy? A breadboard. It's not typically old school breadboards. But I wanted, this is something I'm probably going to have sit by the radio versus down in my workshop. So I want it to look kind of nice, right? So... I'm probably going to use, this side's got more color to it, but I kind of like the dark better. So what I did was I copied the schematic that 
Doug and Bob had sent to George that had the parts list as well as the schematic on it and I'll show that here on the screen. Next I took a picture of George's layout that he had done based on that and I put it in my computer and I generated my version of it that has the layout with the components get a little closer so you can see I just did this in paint so it's not nothing fancy but it has the, the exact layout and where each of these tie points is is where I will be putting a nail a copper nail into the breadboard so what I had to do with that then is blow that up into a size that works for the breadboard. So that's going to go like that. So what the plan is going to be is I'm going to center this and I'm going to take this to the breadboard in just a couple locations. Probably like right here and right here. And I'm going to leave this right on the breadboard. And I think versus nailing nailing the nails in here, they're copper, they're solid copper nails, they're not copper coated. I'm going to take a small drill bit and I'm going to pre-drill holes. And I'm going to put holes at each spot where there's going to be a junction for wire or a connection for a part. I'll put the positive rail up here with a continuous tin copper wire the same down here and for the negative rail and then I will start to populate this board. This should be one video total in this series. So that's going to be the plan. So the next thing I'm going to do is get this tape down and drill the holes and then I'll come back when I have the, the copper nails ready to knock in there and I'll show you that process. Now the other thing I'm going to note that's a little bit different than what George had done. George basically made his tracing and then he laid it out on his board and drew it out on his board. I'm trying to keep this clean. So the idea is this, that I'm going to take this right down and I'm going to use this as my guide, but it's also going to work as a protection from any flux or solder from that or burning on the board. I'm hoping that's what it's going to do. We'll only find out as as this progresses. But that's the plan and then once everything is on there I'll try and tear it off, cut it off of the fine razor blade, whatever I got to do, hopefully without scratching the surface of the breadboard. But that's the plan. I think this is going to be a fun project. I think what I'm going to do with this laid out this way, I also have a 3.5 millimeter jack that I will put on the board right here for the audio in and I have a mechanical uh, variable condenser out of one of my other radios that I'm going to mount here in this diagonal portion and that's where the tuner will be. Uh, it shows it right here and that's where we'll obviously wire it in that way but it's going to reside right here and then I think this spot right here should be big enough or maybe right here that that's where I'll put the 9 volt battery so let's go ahead and get this taped in place and holes drilled. Okay folks getting ready to drill my holes and hopefully you guys are going to stay in the screen here I'm just going to speed through this anyway but to be careful not go through this into my wife's table
Okay, I think I got them all in there. I really didn't need this one here, but I'm kind of a guy that likes symmetrical stuff. I, with that came together like that, I like that. I didn't want to go diagonal like that, so I went ahead and drilled it. But I think I got the rest of this. Okay, I think that's that. Let me dump the wood dust off of this and we'll be back. We'll start the nails. Okay, so these are the copper nails that I'll be using. I got these on eBay. They're not copper coated. They're supposed to be solid copper. That's what I'm going to use. So let's go ahead and drive some of these in. in here and then we'll speed through it. I drilled the holes, pre-drilled them because I didn't want to split the wood, but I made sure I had a tight enough bit that it would still hold nice and tight. But I think we'll be alright. All right, I think we got all the nails in. Just double check. I tried to keep them all about the same height. Try to keep them all fairly straight. All right. So what we got going here is I've got a roll of tin copper wire. Nothing special about it. I cut off a piece so I didn't have to mess with the roll. It's kind of crooked. George showed this little trick when he was doing his. Pull it tight and basically straighten it out. So that's what we're doing here. Got some hemostats I'm going to use to help me wrap it around these terminals today. But basically what we're going to do is just kind of wrap it around each nail like so hopefully I still got you guys in screen I haven't moved you off of screen and there we have it now I haven't decided exactly how low I want these to be on the nails. I don't know that I want it right up against the wood. So I'm still trying to decide how I want to do that. I need to make that decision before I start soldering these in place. I kind of like the looks of it up higher. But I don't want it real high either. So. I think I'm going to take it down to maybe about an eighth of an inch off the board. And then that way that'll give me clearance under it. And maybe true breadboard fashion should have been right up against it, but I'm kind of doing this for the artistic piece of it as well. So therefore, I might not do it exactly the way it was done back then, but we will pursue what we got here. Okay. Now we'll do the top.
This one shouldn't take a very long piece. Moose is definitely unhappy because he is locked downstairs. And he's used to me being downstairs instead of being upstairs. And he's just going to have to get over it tonight. Poor Moose. Woe is Moose. So, let's take this one. I like working left to right, so we'll just go this way first. There's one, two, three, and four. Push them down a little bit. And that's that. Now all I need to do is go ahead and solder these and start populating the board. I could wait until I wrap additional components around them. And that way I only have to solder once. Let me think about that. I gotta go get my components anyway. I shall return. Okay, so I've started to populate the board a little bit. I got my very first resistor on there. It actually is a 15K. Now what I'm finding is a lot of these values, I don't have the exact value. This one I do, this is a 22K and it's gonna go right here. These are actually one watt resistors, which is way overkill for this. I mean, like way overkill for this. But I like them because they're more visible on this big board. The other ones that I have, the quarter watt resistors, they're really all it needs, are so microscopic. You can kind of see the difference in them. When I mean, you look at that little bitty thing on that board, it just doesn't have the same impact and that this is actually more of a visual this is what I want it functional obvious but I want it visual as well so the problem is I don't have the exact values for some of these like the, the 2.2 or the 4.3 I may have to put a couple in series in order to make that up in that in that size so if I do that I'll probably have to kind of like stand them on in and lay them over to the side like on the you know if I say I did it on this one I would hook one in here, do this, and then bring the other one. They'd both be laying this way. That way I can get them the correct value and still be able to hopefully use my, my bigger resistors more for the visual impact. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start populating this board. Spare you the details on that because I've got to dig them all out and put them together. But when I come back, I'll have the, the board populated at least with the resistors. And then we'll move on from there. All right, everybody. I've got the board populated with the resistors. All the resistors are down. The resistors and the, the millihenry inductor is on the board. I don't have these 280 millihenry inductors on the board yet because I still have to make them. I have some toroid ferrite cores and some 26 gauge wire and I still have to make them up. But I have the resistors on. I had to put some in series to get the exact values. Where I didn't have to put them together, I didn't, but where I did, I did. So I'm about ready to solder these up. So at least get this these soldered up. I don't have the capacitors on there yet. I haven't even looked for them yet. But I do have these done, so I'm gonna go ahead and solder these up. Okay, that gets it. 
I think that's it. Okay, going to give you guys a little bit closer look at what I've been doing here. So from this angle you can see all the nails sticking up in there. I've got all the resistors soldered in place. You can see right there I got a little too close to the paper, got it burnt right there, it got a little bit burnt. Hopefully that didn't go through too bad on the wood. If it did, I guess it did. So I've got the capacitors to put on there, the three transistors, and the two inductors. And we'll be populated. So let me get that stuff in place and we'll do that. Welcome back folks. So what I'm doing here is building the L1 and the L2 inductor. What I started out with is a T50-43 ferrite core. As you can see it's not very big and the design that Doug and Bob came up with uses 26 gauge wire which is what I've got right here. 26 gauge magnet wire. Now it calls for 11 turns and that's what I've put on this. Hopefully I get you guys in camera. That's one side of it. I got to do the second side. And then I got to tie two ends together. Now I don't know if you can see this but I stripped the enamel off of this coated wire on both ends of the leads. And the issue that I have right now is I don't know if this diameter of this core is exactly the right size. And I don't have an inductance meter. I ordered an inductance meter about a month ago and it hasn't showed up yet. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and wire this, finish this side and wire it in and um, once I get my other capacitors in place I'll test it. But I think what else I'm going to do just as since I don't have an inductance meter is I'm thinking that I might just take two of these and put them together like that and wrap, do the same wrap only with two of these because in the video that I watched of George's his diameter was definitely bigger than this and even at that he wasn't quite there it was at I think 163 micro Henry's so I'm just gonna do this as a as a test because I don't have an inductance meter now if I put this together with this and it works fine, then I'll have to use this. If I put it together with this and it doesn't work or not worth a darn, then I'll try this one. If after that it doesn't work worth a darn, I guess I'll have to wait till my inductance meter shows up so that I can actually get one wound right. But right now I don't have it so I gotta do what I can. So that's the plan here, but I'm going to spare you watching me wind this because it's not that easy. you got to do it under a magnifier. And I'll come back once I get both these wound up. Okay, so here's the two reluctors that I put together. This one has 11 turns on the, the core. 11 turns here, 11 turns there. This one has 10 turns and 10 turns on a double core. But uh, that's them. So got them wound up. I'll we'll see what it's going to do. I still don't have those capacitors yet. Today is Saturday and I'm supposed to have them on Monday. So kind of stopped until then. We so there they are. Both are sitting on the board. And the only reason I'm showing you this at this point in time because only one of them is going to get used, right? It's going to go there like that. But the reason I'm showing you this is I meant to tell you earlier when I was showing to you that I did wind both of these in phase 
so it kind of was against what was printed on the, the schematic and uh, I believe George did his in phase as well so I want these in phase in case you're wondering okay folks still working on the old school AM transmitter trying to keep things going even though I'm waiting on those capacitors so I got a nice knob that was off of the old V5C Atwater Kent that I'm going to use on this at least for now until I find a nicer knob or a better knob. I mean the nice this nice knob but I hate to waste it off of the uh, other 55C not the one I finished but a different one. I was going to show you this so this is going to run on a 9 volt battery still trying to keep it old school this is a 9 volt battery holder out of an old Hickok meter from late 30s so I kind of robbed this piece out of it it was painted gray but I go ahead I went ahead and I uh, took the gray paint off I like the bare metal look and I think I'm gonna screw this onto this board and then I've got 9 volt contact I've modified to go down to the base of it and I found some of my cloth wire that I can run for that so even though I used the rubber covered wire over there oh well over here I use the cloth covered wire because it's small this is a small cloth wire covered wire I could have used it over there too had I thought about it I may change it out I don't know we'll see but I'm gonna get this hooked up and we'll come back okay folks we're back I got the 9 volt battery holder all in place and wired up so you kind of see what that looks like there other thing I did I added some feet to it and got that tag that was on the bottom off so I think about as far along as I can go until I get uh, my caps on Monday so it's pretty much done I gotta put antenna lead here the 1500 PF cap here the 0.1 cap here the 0.15 cap here and the 0.15 cap here and that's pretty much it and of course tie that in and um, be ready to put some juice to it. I'm not planning on putting hooking the battery up to it until we get this thing tuned in right. I'm gonna use my bench power supply on it. I'm gonna probably start tearing this paper out from underneath there. I did have a little mishap with my soldering iron. Leave it to me to screw something up but I guess it makes it look even more old school like it's been as a cigarette or something on it. I don't know anyway but uh, yeah looking pretty good I'm pretty happy with it now if it works that'll be the main thing well hello everybody so we're back to the breadboard and as you can see I've made a little bit of progress since I stopped the last one I've got the paper all ripped off I've got all the caps in place my parts come in so I got the caps all in place I also got the reluctor in place the dual reluctor actually and what I wound up doing my LCR meter finally came in value on the inductors they were right around 170 um, micro henrys if I remember correctly so anyway those that's that's that and uh, Everything is wired in, and what I've got is my tablet here for the input source, and I've got the little Sportmate transistor radio that I got from Bill um, as the receiving radio, and then I've got my variable power supply 
on the back side is a variable side. So I've got that set up. And I think I'm gonna give this a whirl and see what we can do. So let's go ahead and get you on the tripod. Okay, so we're gonna hook up. I've got my tablet on my Blake Shelton Spotify plugged in and plugged in here. If that clock shuts off. The plan is I'm going to power this up, so let's go ahead and put the negative on here first. Positive, that even though the blue light's on, the power supply is not on yet. So go ahead and get that on there. There we go. I'm going to switch on the power supply, which is the green light. You guys can't see that, but it's 9.3 volts. So I've got Blake Shelton on. Let's hit, well I guess we need to turn the radio on. Okay. There we go, should be playing. Alright, let's see if we can get this thing to, to work. I heard something. success I'm happy with it I think that um, I probably need to see if I can get it to do a little more more power output and maybe because my little antenna lead here is a little short but I don't think it's quite got enough power from a distance standpoint uh, unless this is sitting right on the radio I'm going to use it with to uh, reach my other radios in my house so 
I'm going to have to play around with that and see what I can do to increase the output. But as far as this video is concerned, I think that the uh, old school breadboard board that uh, I put together using uh, George Christoffi's method and the schematic from Doug over at Moslat and, and Bob Gibbons uh, is a success. So we'll end this video. It's probably one of my shorter series that I've put together. And uh, stay tuned for part two of the Mantola R654BM. I've got some capacitors ordered for that. And uh, I've been making a trip here in about a week, so I may not uh, get to work on that for another week or two unless the parts come in sooner. But that will be upcoming. But until then, if you like what you've seen, please uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to know when I do something new. So from Greg at Greg's Vintage Workshop, we'll call this one a wrap. Thanks for watching.